If you haven't been to your neighborhood software store lately, you may not realize there is a new category of software on the shelves. No longer do the signs just say Mac, IBM, five and a quarter, three and a half. There is now a CD-ROM section in your software store. Software on CD-ROMs are for real now with lots of new titles coming out every week. Today we take a look at the new kit on the shelf, CD-ROM software, on this edition of Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles has been made possible in part by PC Connection and Mac Connection. Mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh. And the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffee, and with me this week is Deborah Ivanoff, a multimedia consultant. Deborah, I think CD-ROM software has arrived when I get these high-tech catalogs in the mail, and there are pages and pages of CD-ROM software titles here. The Bible, magazines, Monarch Notes, you name it, it's all here just through mail order. There are so many CD-ROM titles out there now that here is a CD-ROM whose contents are all the CD-ROM titles. And in fact, this just came out. This is the American Business Phone Book. It is the equivalent of 5,000 phone books on one CD-ROM, 9 million businesses, virtually every business in the United States. And if I wanted to, for instance, search for the phone number for the Sony Corporation, uh, it would say, well, there's 99 Sony offices in the United States. Which one do you want? I could obviously refine my search, use the computer. In fact, as I can go backwards on this, if I get a phone message, I have the number, but I can't read the message. I don't know who called me. I put in the phone number. It'll tell me what business has that phone number. Pretty powerful Amazing. use of CD-ROM. What do you have over there on the Mac? Well, actually, I have something a little different. This would be for you to sit down and work with a child. This is a program called The Silly Noisy House, and it graphics, sounds, something that a child mm, can work through different passages in different places in the house and lots of surprises for them. Deborah, people watch this stuff and they say, no, wait a minute, what's, why, why can't kids just read a book like the good old days? Or, or what's wrong with print and books and going to the library? Why do we need all the CD-ROM stuff? Is this replacing the printed word, really? You know, I think that's a concern today. I personally don't believe that it's replacing anything. It's actually broadening the range of experience. I think it's a great way for younger computer users to get used to using the mouse and the keyboard. Also, our children are being raised in a video age, yeah, in an yeah. age where animation and a lot, of, a lot of visuals coming their way. So it helps with their discernment. Okay. Well, today we'll look at some of the best examples of new software on CD-ROM, including the new video clip collections using QuickTime. Now, the real growth in CD-ROM software up until now has been in business, where workers need quick access to massive amounts of data. We begin with one good example, the Sabre Travel Information Network run by American Airlines. With the cost of travel rising, tourists and business travelers want to know more about where they're going. At Carroll Travel in Washington, D.C., travel agent Pat Parrish uses the CD-ROM-based SaberVision to show her clients what to expect. There's really very little lacking. Um, the language is spoken, the types of rooms they have, the types of facilities. Is there one swimming pool, two? Is it on a beach nearby? It's very specific, really. Sabre Vision provides high-quality color photos of hotel exteriors and interiors. It also shows maps with directions on how to get to the hotel. You can even zoom out to see that location in a larger context. And the beauty of this CD-ROM system is you don't have to be a computer expert to know how to use it. I have no idea what's inside a computer. I don't even want to know. It's not my field. I just know what the tool is and how I use it and how it applies to my clients, which is what's important to me. What's important to any travel agent is that the client feel confident about the agent's recommendations. That's where the resources of the CD-ROM really count. Often in traveling, there's a, there's a high degree of anxiety about it. You know, you see the movies where somebody books the Grand Plaza and they get there and it's a, it's a trailer or something. And so they, they, people are concerned that, that it's really going to be what they, they think it's going to be. And of course the most, uh, as they say, a picture is worth a thousand words, that they can actually then be assured that the, that the place they're going to is going to really be the kind of place that they hope to spend some time in. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel.
First there was clip art, then there were libraries of digital images, and now there are video clip CD-ROMs. Here to show us that and more are Josefa Haveman, publisher with Wayzata Technology, and back with us, Deborah Ivanov. Josefa, let's turn to you, and you've got two things you've created you're going to show us here on CD-ROM. One is the Gaia Environment Resource, and then we've heard an awful lot about the space, time, and art. We've got Gaia up here first. Tell us what the idea was behind putting this CD-ROM together. Uh, environment, mm -hmm. the pictures of nature uh, that can be used as clip art in various ways, slideshows, presentations, uh, and there are pictures about the environment, uh -huh. and environmental problems, some logging, things So like just to that. help really people understand and see these, these images of the environment, is that the point? Uh, yes, to help get the word out yeah. in these media. Well, give us, give us some examples of the kind of images you have on okay. this disc. Uh, and so to tell us what we're seeing as they come up. Endangered birds. Um, we've got pictures of leaves that can be used in many various decorative purposes uh, to um, enhance any pictures and any material that's about nature. And we've got some um, uh, landscapes, uh, of course. So you can sort of index through these in the black and white. Is that what you're doing? Then clicking on one, and you can actually see the color images that's in that right. category. That's right. I use we use HyperCard as an indexing right. medium. And these are seascapes uh, mm -hmm. taken along the West Coast. It's all West Coast material. So, I mean, you're not showing environmental horror scenes, just the opposite in a way. You're showing uh, the, the beauty of nature the beauty of or nature, what's, yes, you know, what yeah. we have left. Uh, but I also have some environmental, specifically environmental. And uh, these pictures. are your photographs? Uh, the, my video, the digitized uh, from my oh, video. I see. Uh -huh. uh, well, and some of the black and white images yeah. are from my own black and white photography. That's right. Uh, here are logging yeah. pictures with logging problems. So that's that type of environmental imagery. And then this is, uh, there's a set yeah. of pictures here about and these recycling. Would, these would be distributed to schools or, or environmental uh, groups? Yeah, and, they're yeah. available for use, anyone who wants to. All right, to let's sort of leave the Earth and go up now into space and take oh, a look okay. at the space, time, and art disc which you've put together. Yes, all right. Okay, um, so we have what, what Voyager's is, views. All right, Voyager's views. So you just click right on so here. So this is literally video. views from the Voyager spacecraft? Uh, not literally. Oh. Uh, the Voyager spacecraft imagery is, is raw. It's pretty rough. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I have um, added color and I've sharpened them up. And, and in this case, I've this also combined and mm. uh, two of Jupiter's moons here. Mm. Uh, so that you get uh, this, more this, this is not, though, uh, artist rendering. This is based on original Voyager photography, yes, though? Yes, it's based on um, original yeah. Voyager imagery. What other examples? Uh, here is another combination of a couple of uh -huh, moons. Uh -huh. uh, and then. I have. Um, what can we look at next? I lost it. That's okay. <laughs> Here ha it is. Here it is. Ah, the Jupiter detail. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the detail of Jupiter uh, in the colors that were shown actually mm. by the Hubble telescope wow. recently. And there's one more that you, the red spot you must see. Jupiter. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, but the, oh, uh, the yeah. basic planets are all taken by Voyager. All right, before we finish here, let's take a look at the quick time movies you have on here from space. What do they look like? Okay. We go back to the main menu, mm -hmm. and then we can, from there we can access uh, quick time movies. Quick time movies. And uh, what can we look uh, well, at here? What we have animation. here are some um, animations uh, from the same kind of imagery. Uh, that I, I animated these in Photoshop. Each frame is okay. in Photoshop. And this is image. the birth of the Earth. The birth, yeah, right. It's called Earth Birth. Earth Birth. And uh, another one I'd like to show you is yeah. called Going Nova. Okay. Going Nova. Yeah. I'd like to, for more people to see what, what might be happening out there in the universe. Mm. Although, no matter how fantastic we get, I think it's always going to be an understatement right, of right. what's That's really out sure. there. Well, that's, that's terrific. How many images altogether are on the space time and art disk? Uh, over 300 uh -huh. of various kinds. Now, I have a space fantasy imagery that we haven't looked at. Yeah, well, we don't have time, I'm afraid, for the, for the fantasy. All right, Deborah, let's turn yeah. to you. You're going to show us two new CD-ROMs, and the first one is the Digital Video Library. That is correct. This is a wonderful program. Here we see the opening screen includes information from the file name, the folder it exists in, to the size. This is wonderful for the CD-ROM technology because you can have so many files of such a large size mm -hmm. on one CD-ROM. Right. It was designed with System 7 in mind using the balloons yeah. help feature. You can go to any, just press on anything and it tells you what it is. It also has its own help features under this question mm -hmm. mark. Let's go to under file name and let's 
choose jump in yeah let's okay. choose the video here okay, it, it goes to that video what you see is an opening clip right. you see some keywords just like on a tape recorder you, you can, can adjust that, that and it, yeah and it plays it oh. there's another way to find some things you can use the find feature okay. it'll choose a word for you you can so, type in the word so find any clip that, that's about bicycles right and it just goes to the first one alphabetically that has bicycle and its keywords and you can roll it one. take a look at it yeah oh. exactly there's uh, a third way of finding anything. Mm -hmm. In case you don't, maybe you're interested in bicycles, you just, under the keywords, you go ahead and click back off that word bicycle, and it'll take you to the next one. Here's one called Bike Race. Uh -huh. Finally, you can copy anything you'd like to your hard drive. So if I use... find a video clip I like, I can sort of keep it and copy it. Yes, and you can use it then in, in an interactive mm. video type program. You can also save it as a startup movie instead right. of a startup screen, which is kind of fun. And Deborah, show us this second disc from EduCorp called The Dictionary of the Living World. Sure, Stuart. This is a wonderful um, information piece, an educational piece for really children and adults of all ages. It's very intuitive. It answers questions about the different buttons. It takes you to a self-help panel. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go straight into choosing um, a term or an animal. So just say, tell me something about goats. Exactly. And, there it is. and it loads a picture of what the goat, you can mm -hmm. refer to its family. It tells you some things about the, the other orders. You can click on this little globe, which is a distribution map, which is going to show us a distribution of that particular family Where over. Sure. Uh -huh. We can get a sound in there. Kids love this the kind of thing. Of goats. Sure. Yeah. Sure, exactly. We can also, uh, quite a few of these have animations so and movies video included. Clips in here exactly, also. video clips, some animations, real nice. And this is going to show us another member of this same family. Okay. So, so you can get an idea of the. Okay, the range. so actually, when you called up goat, it gave you this category of bison sheep, yes, cattle, did. goats, etc. I could select goat again, it would go to another place uh -huh. in the dictionary where go goats might. Okay follow again. And it keeps, uh, it keeps on sort of making goat noises for us. <laughs> well, yes it does. Well, it's loading that movie. And Isn't that okay. nice? Oh, that's, that's and there's the another of member of that same family. That's you terrific. can see the movement. So someone could get an idea yeah. that it's cloven, it's hoofed. One question before we leave, leave is, Josefa, I mean, one of the criticisms of the CD-ROMs, of course, it's kind of slower access time than a hard drive. We have 200 megabyte hard drives these days. What's the advantage of the CD-ROM? Storage space. 500 megs, um, they're light, they're small, but to use them, it's usually best to transfer the, the files you're going to be working uh -huh. with to your hard drive, and it's quicker access, so that slowness doesn't really matter. Okay. So really think of the CD-ROM as a storage device, not an operational program you're going to play yes, with. Yes, par excellence. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank well, CD-ROM technology has become a great asset to scientists who need to study massive amounts of numerical and graphical data. At the U.S. Geological Survey in Reston, Virginia, they are transferring all their data to CD-ROMs. From the ocean floor to outer space and everything in between, the U.S. Geological Survey collects and studies data on the environment, weather, natural disasters, and endless other natural phenomena. The work of the scientists here creates enormous amounts of information in the form of photographs, numbers, and words. So while most of us are happy to be able to access a CD-ROM database, these scientists are creating them. We now have a medium where you can actually write on a CD-ROM, where you can make a couple of copies of something that was on tape and you don't want to lose it, or as data come in from the field and tape, they can be transferred to the CD-ROM, if for no other reason, for random access. Tapes are sequential. If something's at the end of the tape, You've got to read through it and find it. With uh, CD-ROM, you can go anywhere on it. The ability to quickly access data is one major feature of the CD-ROM. But using optical storage also speeds up the process of getting data into the hands of users. When we were putting out uh, paper atlases, uh, we found that it can take us, just the publication part of the process can take us almost two years to get the, the atlases printed. The CD-ROM, on the other hand, we can do in a matter of months. The other major advantage of using CD-ROM as a distribution medium is that the scientific data can now be accessed by many more researchers who only need a low-cost personal computer to read the data. It's made the data available to a very, very large number of users who previously had no ability at all to get uh, a system that could manipulate the data. The result of wider distribution of scientific data has actually made the underlying research more valuable. Most scientists think the five people who already have the data are their audience. And it goes out on CD-ROMs, and thousands of people want these data because they find other uses for them that they never anticipated. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Maria Gabriel.
The PC platform has matured as a multimedia environment, and many of the new CD-ROM products are now coming out for the IBM-compatible world. Here to show us more CD-ROM software is Joanna Gibbs of Viva 2000, and also with us Larry Schiller from the Bureau of Electronic Publishing. Larry, in the last segment, we saw CD-ROM drives plugged into a Macintosh, and now we have a CD-ROM drive and a 486 PC. Do we have the same problem with CD-ROM software as you do with magnetic software? I mean, there are Mac disks and there are PC disks? Most disks play on a Macintosh and not on a PC and vice versa. Yeah. But there is increasingly a set of disks, and the Bureau's titles all uh, now play on both platforms. And I, we hope that we'll be seeing that with other publishers So everything well. is on the disk. You don't have to worry about where the software is going to sit. Yeah, at all. Great. All right, Joanna, let's turn to your program. And you're taking advantage of CD-ROM technology to teach a foreign language, French, for example, here. Uh, what's the benefit to you in a program like this and using the CD-ROM rather than just magnetic software? Well, the benefit is the digitized audio, which allows you to listen to the words mm -hmm. and practice speaking. And uh, this is the uh, feature of the game that... Uh, okay, so this is the French program you have up here. And show us, show us how you do that. I mean, how do you get the program to talk and pronounce the words for you? And, and, and how does it... How do you learn from this? All right, well, let's go to scene one here. Okay. Right, I'm in here. Sorry, I'm in. So you put, I mean, you can, I take it it remembers who you are then and knows what your progress is in the game when you Right, do you can keep score. Uh -huh. Okay, you so we have there. a sentence in English. What do we have to do? You have a, a native sentence at the top of the screen which fi with five highlighted fragments. Okay. You select the corresponding foreign fragment in the random menu in the center. So I you have to Ah, okay. You click and the computer speaks. You go to the next one. Oh, I see. My so we name. take a segment of the sentence at a time. Yes, okay, uh huh. Okay, so now what's, fr what's French for my name is what my it's asking us, right? Je m'appelle. Je m'appelle. Uh huh. The third fragment, I, I am. Je suis. You're looking for on, on vacation. vacation. Pour ses vacances. Mm -hmm. For two weeks. <clears throat> yeah, here we go. Pour deux semaines. What happens when you make a mistake, uh, Joanna? When you make a mistake, <clears throat> we don't show it to you down here. Uh, the, the program actually challenges you to search, discover, and learn. Uh -huh. And uh, you remember your answers when you have to work for them. If you don't, uh, okay. if, if you make the correct, incorrect selection, uh, it doesn't appear down here. You have to go back and you have mm -hmm. to keep working mm -hmm. until you find it. It's like a puzzle. You have to work for it. Okay. And that's your reward. It's positive reinforcement at its okay. best. What are the other parts of, of Viva 2000 French? Let me go on to the next one here. I am... Je suis... Hmm. à l'aéroport. All right. Now, <clears throat> if you click on the right side of the mouse... Uh -huh. Avec. You just can, li you can listen to Avec. the word as many times uh -huh. as you wish until you get Avec. the pronunciation correct. By pressing on the left side of the mouse, Avec. you actually place it in the in the mm -hmm, uh, sentence, mm -hmm. your foreign sentence, which is building below. With my whole family. Toute ma famille. Today. So you really get to learn the, the, the language, you get to learn the words, the dictionary, et cetera. You learn the pronunciation as yes, you go. Yes, you learn, you learn the pronunciation and the grammar yeah. and uh, the conjugation is all built in. With, it's it's yeah. disguised without is our this, Is this meant as a standalone? I mean, I buy this, sit down to learn French, or is it meant to be used in a classroom situation with mm -hmm. a teacher, with a book? How? It's, it's, it's either way. It can mm -hmm. be used in the classroom. It can be used. Uh, it's for all. It's for all yeah. uh, users, home users, school users. Uh, and do you have discs in other languages besides the French? Yes, we do. We have the uh, Spanish. We mm -hmm. have in English for Spanish people to learn uh, mm. English, and we have Anglais, French for uh, yeah, French people yeah. to learn English. Oh, that's mm -hmm. great. All right, Larry. Let's turn to you now on the new discs you have at the Bureau of Electronic Publishing. There are three CD-ROMs. I, I want you to show us. And the first one is really weird in a way. It's Monarch Notes, which is. All those Monarch Notes books that you see in that wire rack in the college bookstore, all on one CD-ROM, right? It's the complete set of Monarch Notes, the so full You sort text. of buy this one disc when you're a freshman, that's it for four that's years. That's all you need. All right, show, us what's, horror. show us what's on there. <clears throat> sure. Well, let's take a look at, you'll see there's a lot of authors here. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at H.G. Wells uh -huh. and the, the War, War of the Worlds. Worlds. Um, there's uh, book one and book two of this. And I'm going to bring up... Um, actually, a quote that we have on here from George Kennedy, who's one uh -huh. of the actors who is uh, doing a speaking part. A sudden chill came over me. 
So it's more than Monarch Notes the books. I mean, you can actually hear some of the lines from these stories. Yes, we have many passages spoken, well-known passages, uh -huh. and there are hundreds of illustrations, many in color as well. Okay, let, let's move to the next tier. Suppose I'm not happy with Monarch Notes and I didn't get away with it. Let's put it that one. I really want to read the full text. I guess you have another one here, which is the works of great literature. I'll help you slip that in there. If you can tell me what the great lit uh, CD-ROM is about. Great literature contains the full text, again, of 943 great literary works um, containing uh, uh, illustrations, hundreds of mm -hmm. illustrations, uh, uh, excerpts uh, from music, which is uh, uh, based on the works themselves, mm -hmm. and uh, um, as well as passages, again, spoken by, by well-known actors. So this is full text, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds full of classic text, books. Absolutely. Let's bring it up by author again and take a look at uh, what we've got here. So if I want to look up Shakespeare or something. Sure. Let's, uh, let's bring up Shakespeare and uh, take a look at, uh, well, we've got a quote from Julius Caesar in uh -huh. here. Um, and once again, you have audio. Yes, we do. So I could hear a scene from Julius Caesar. Yes. Here's uh, the, the famous, yeah. uh, Brutus is an honorable man. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. Hmm. Now, how would you see people I, using this? I mean, I'm not going to read Shakespeare on the screen, I assume. As a research tool, I take it? It's a research tool. It's very good for students to use to, to research information mm -hmm. for their English class. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's good for homework, research. Yeah. And parents and adults like having the disc because many times that they'll hear references to things that, uh, to books that they don't have, and this disc has so much yeah, information, yeah. it allows them to Can I pop to this informed. out and get the next one sure, I want to take uh, a look at? Let's, let me exit out of this. Which is uh, Countries of the World, it says. And tell me what this one is about. Countries Encyclopedia, uh, Countries of the World, is a cultural encyclopedia, uh -huh. uh, which uh, lists, I'm going to just exit out of this briefly okay. here and get back into it, which lists uh, um, hundreds of pages of information for every country in the world mm. detailing its history, culture, and economy. Okay, so suppose I want to know something about Japan. I'm concerned about uh, how to deal with the Japanese. Good. Let's go to Asia and bring up Japan. This is useful for several markets. Let's look at what the business person might look at this for. Mm -hmm. National negotiating styles. We've got it for oh. many countries. And uh, here's a section on Japan. The highest calling for a Japanese youth still is to become a government <laughs> official. Let's take a look at a table that contrasts Japanese oh. and American negotiations. So this is pretty deep, here. rich stuff here. It's not just the geography, the mountains, the cities, blah, blah, no, blah. No, it's not. There's, there's a great deal. Although we do have all that, there yeah. are literally, there's 60,000 screenfuls of text hmm. on this desk. All right, Joanna was uh, teaching us French before, so let's go to France here. If I wanted to find out about France, how would I do that? Sure. Let's take a look. Uh, let's actually browse uh, for a landmark in France, the Eiffel Tower. Uh -huh. We can do that with our word yeah. searching here. And uh, we've got six articles dealing with it. And Tourism can we see in France. pictures of it? Sure. I think we've got that in here. There's a picture of the Eiffel Now, the other thing, I mean, you have real CD audio on here, too, don't That's you? That's right. So if I wanted to hear the Marseillaise, the French national anthem? Let's bring that up as well. We have uh, uh, excerpts from all the national anthems, and uh, France is no exception to that. Yeah, so you. let's bring that up and hear that. That's pretty neat. And I see you get the map of France, the flag of sure. France, et cetera. We'll bring that out. The maps, by the way, are licensed from Hammond. Yeah. They're very high quality four color maps. And Great. We do have All flags. right, thank you both very much. Well, I hope we have convinced you to add a CD ROM drive to your computer. That's it for our look at CD ROM software, computer news of the week coming up next on Random Access. In the random access file this week, this is a special summer edition with a focus on software. The top 10 selling software titles last week for the Macintosh, according to Mac Connection, include Microsoft Excel 4.0 version upgrade in the number one spot. And rounding out the top 10 are Symantec SAM and fifth generation Suitcase 2.1. Next up, Paul Schindler in our summer software review. There are lots of painting programs on the market. Fractal Design's Painter is different. It's the first one we've seen that tickles the imagination of professionals who've resisted using personal computers as an artistic medium. And it's a lot of fun for the earnest amateur as well. Painter is available for both the Mac and for Windows. It gives you a fairly amazing number of choices in the types of paper, stroke feathering, and fill techniques you can use. The most impressive part of Painter, though, is the variety of its drawing and painting tools. Everything from airbrush and watercolors through such oddities as crayons, charcoal, and chalk. If none of these options satisfies your creative instincts, you can design a brush of your own or emulate famous painters. 
The refinement of this program is so impressive that you really should try it out with one of Wacom's drawing tablets, like the one I'm using here, instead of a mouse. Drawing on a tablet gives much better control and responds to changes in pressure, something a mouse won't do. Painter costs $300 for its Windows version and $350 for the Mac. Fractal Design is in Aptos, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. That's it for this week's Computer Chronicles. I'm Janelle Stelson. Computer Chronicles has been made possible in part by PC Connection and Mac Connection. Mail order software and hardware peripherals for the PC and the Macintosh. And the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Video cassette copies of this program are available. Computer Chronicles also publishes a companion newsletter containing details on products demonstrated, plus background information on program topics. To order a video cassette or a subscription to the newsletter, call 1 800 366 9484 or write Computer Chronicles. Please specify program subject for tapes. All orders include a free software program for auditing software use.